Hey, this is Marvin. I'm doing game development for six years right now and I just wanted to take you with me on a short journey of what I've done so far, what things I struggled with, what lessons I've learned and yeah, just dive into it and uh, see what projects I've created. Back in the days as I was a teenager, I was always amazed by how the people are making games, how, how they do that. And I think the first step I need to do was to learn programming. So I purchased a book about HTML, JavaScript and CSS programming and styling. And I read a little bit in the book and then I had an incredible idea. So I just have the thought, let's make a game with JavaScript and let's make a rabbit which can collect carrots. Um, that was basically my first game, which was actually not in Unity, but in JavaScript with some HTML and CSS for styling. So after a certain amount of time, I saw that there was even more for creating games than just JavaScript, HTML and CSS. But it took me a long time to see that and I saw Unity and I was instantly amazed by that program because there are so many tools which allow you to create games really fast and there are so many things in there which help you with creating games and nice apps and so I purchased a book about it and took some time to discover all the features they have there and learned a lot of stuff about game loops, animations, 3D modeling and so on. So after a certain time learning Unity it was time for my first project and I was so excited about it because I thought like, whoa, I can make a game with that, that's super crazy. And back in the days I was really in love with dungeon games and also with zombie shooters like Call of Duty zombie mode. And I tried to create my own one dungeon zombie shooter thing and I was super amazed in the beginning, searched for beautiful assets in the asset store and had a lot of ideas which I tried to put into the game. but. After a certain amount of time, like several months doing stuff, adding new features and so on, I recognized that it was too much for me and I can't handle a project like that because there are so many things to, to take care of, which I don't know about, like performance. Basically, you can say lesson learned, don't use a project which is too big in the beginning. So I not finished that one. But it was a lot of fun and one day I will for sure come back to it. So after this first, let's say, failed project, my goal was more to do a small project, make it playable, make it like a playable game, which I can release on certain platforms. And I quickly focused on mobile game development because there are so many small games you can play on your smartphone and with a lot of simple mechanics, not too much things in there, like this hyper casual games. And a lot of people own a proper device, like a smartphone, which you can use for downloading this game. So I have a broad audience basically. And to make it clear in the beginning, not all the content I'll show you in this videos was created by myself. So I decided very quickly that I want to use a lot of things from the asset store because there are a lot of really beautiful things out there. And I also used some other projects which are free for commercial use. In 2016, after playing around with Unity a lot and trying a lot of assets, I finally released my first project, which is called Final Ball World, which I think is a pretty shitty name, but that's the best what I came up with after doing some App Store search optimization research. And it was a lot of fun uh, to create that game and it took me a long time to make it ready for shipping it to iOS because iOS was my first platform which I targeted. And when I look back, I think there's definitely a lot of potential for improvements, but it's still playable. So I tested it today on my iPad and you can still play it, but I think it's kind of too boring. The user interface looks not too well. The whole models and the lightning and the effects are not too great. They, they could be improved for sure. <laughs> And when you create an app, for sure, you think you can make some money with it. And because I thought that, I came up with the idea to add some ads into my game. Like some ads which are popping up when you fall down or when you pass the level or so on. And I think there are 
way too much ads inside of my app. And another big overhead I struggled with was localization because in the beginning I thought, hey, only English is not too great. So I want to have more languages because I got, I will get some more attention in the stores and uh, using Google Translator and translated the whole app into 10 languages, created a small system inside of my game to display the currently used language keys. And the downside of that was that it took a long time. Translations are also not too good. Also when it comes to smaller words like menu, for example, when you translate it into another language, there are probably some more meanings for menu. And then it could be that Google Translator is not taking the right meaning for the word menu in the current context of a game. And so lesson learned for me, make a game which people like and then eventually do paid translations to increase usage. Not doing Google Translator translations and also don't start with translating the whole app into several languages when you don't know if the people will appreciate that. Because in my case I just released my first game, was super amazed with it and then starting to realize that the people are not too amazed with that and so I don't got the downloads I expected and don't got the, ex the attention I expected. And so it was really not worth all the work to translate it into several languages. But at this point I not stopped creating games. I was disappointed because my game got not the attention I expected. But Unity just amazed me and I really want to push a nice application out to the store which the people like. and which I get some nice feedback about, probably I can earn some money with it. And that was the time when I thought a lot about new game mechanics. The whole day I thought about game mechanics I could implement into a game and make something new and crazy and cool. And I took a lot of notes and finally came up with some, let's say, new ideas for apps which I created. The first app I created after Final Ball World was called Combine It and the idea of that one was you have to combine cubes with the same color in a certain pattern and to make it short it was not a success because I think I don't know about a game which does exactly that but there are a lot of puzzle games out there like Candy Crush or so and they put a lot of effort into making the game really great like making it have so many levels and the user interface looks really great and you have a lot of things which attract the user like rewards you get and achievements you can reach and I think that's way more than I can do for a single app and that's one of the reasons which it was no success. The next project I created was Minesweeper in 3D and it was a clone of the old Minesweeper but on a cube in three dimensions. And that was kind of a success because it reaches more than 10,000 downloads on the App Store and it was also in the game charts in the Apple App Store and generated more than $10 app revenue for the ads I displayed in one day. And that was right before Christmas. It was only one day or two days where it generated $10 per day and it goes down very quickly after that. But it was like a Christmas gift for me because I don't know, that, that was an incredible feeling. like. It shows that the games I created can really generate some kind of money, even though it was not too much. I remember I discovered an app called Boost 2 on the iPhone, which is an endless runner where you have to avoid hitting obstacles. And I really liked that one. And so I decided to make my own endless running game and it was a lot of fun to develop that one. When I look back, I think the first version was really slow and boring and even the latest version has space for a lot of improvements and it seems like you are always amazed by your own games and think they are just great but they are not great so when i look back i see that there is a lot of space for improvements and i can't understand why i thought that the game was cool but it was a lot of fun to create it and this is a game I developed over a longer time, taking some breaks, releasing an update to the stores and the latest progress is even not in the stores, perhaps I will come back to it someday and continue developing it. And I love to see the progress this game has made over time, so you can really see that it improved visually and also in regard the game mechanics. 
but there was not too much feedback about it and so I decided to leave the project behind and start something new. There are also some smaller side projects which I want to talk about and there is Teachwith in 3D which I created and which is open source on GitHub so you can check it out if you want but it's not really in 3D so the game mechanics are in 2D as the original Teachwith but the graphic is in 3D. And I got some stars on GitHub, not too much, but I was lucky to, to see some people like that and it was also great to get some feedback about it. So someone has used it in their thesis for some experiments and another person tried to implement multiplayer on that. And it was a great experience to see some people use the things you create and make their own stuff with it. Then I created Snake in 3D. So you can see I really like the idea that you can take concepts which are working in two dimensions and port them over to the third dimension. And first that started as a project for university. I also added a small multiplayer mode. And after a certain amount of time, I decided to just go for the single player mode and also pushed it to the App Store, continued to develop it a little bit, added some trees, nice clouds, and improved the game mechanics a little bit, but it was not a great success in the end. So especially the Endless Runner, Unlimited, but also all the other apps I created consumed a lot of time and I don't receive too many positive feedbacks about it and so this took my motivation away to continue doing this. And I took a little break and stopped for a while. Three years ago I started to read about fractals and ray marching and played around with it in Unity a little bit and created a small fractal rendering project. I not felt like a lot of people would use it but I decided to push it to the app store this time without ads. And after some time I recognized that there were some downloads and I just thought hey why not offering it for one dollar and I was incredibly amazed that someone is purchasing it and I got some sales on it. So I checked the statistics every day and it felt amazing to see one person a day purchase that app for one dollar. So people are spending money for my apps, that's crazy. Even one dollar is not too much, but it was a really great feeling. And it was also really great to see that I don't have to use ads anymore to annoy the users with content they don't want to see, so they pay one time for the app and they get all the features there are no ads no interruptions and the complete experience you get for the money you spend this project was the first one for which i had to dive deeper into shader programming even at this point i do not understand too much about high level shader language and rendering but it was enough to assemble the small fractal ray marcher with a lot of code i ported over from glsl and with some customizations i also have done and I continued to develop that one, released a huge update, the version 2 and then after that the version 3 and that were huge steps forward and also I got some attention about it and some sweet reviews where the people are just saying hey that's a cool app or hey I give you three stars, it's a nice idea but there are some improvements I would suggest and that felt really cool to get finally some feedback on it, some people who honestly tried out the app, say what they think and even say that they like it. That was awesome. Last year I spotted Puzzle's fluid simulation app and was just overwhelmed by the beautiness of it. I felt like I also want to do something like that and luckily enough Pavel released a WebGL version of the simulation as an open source project on GitHub and I also found a fork of this project where the author started to convert the whole thing into a, a Unity project. I took this as a starting point, learned a lot about shader programming to make the whole thing work properly and decided to also add real-time sounds using the wonderful Unity plugin Audio Helm from Matt Title. I also spent a lot of time building a menu system for saving and loading configurations because in the fluid simulation you can configure a lot of things like the color of your flutes and so on. And I posted the app on Reddit during a discount week which I created, so I offered the app for free for one week. And I also got mentioned on App Advice's app of the day, which gave me several thousand downloads and a lot of really sweet reviews, like a lot of reviews where the people say, whoa, that's pretty nice, I like it. And that was great. I also continued to update the app with new features until now, and I really enjoy to work on it. 
Something new which came up in the last two projects, on the Fractal project and in the Fluid project, was feedback I finally got. So I finally got emails and honest reviews for my apps where the people say I like it or hey it's okay but try to improve that and that's really great. I try to be very responsive when it comes to answering emails and reviews and I got a lot of sweet mails from people contacting me with valuable feedback and ideas for features which I could add. Even if I can't live from the earnings of my app development, it's wonderful to hear about people who enjoy your work and also getting input for improvements you can add. That's really great. I also created an app called Mendelize, which started as a weekend project and now I'm continuing to developing it a little bit. So basically I scrolled through the asset store and saw a mandala shader. I decided to create a small mandala app where you can load images into your app and create psychedelic mandalas. So I spent a weekend prototyping it and even some more time for smaller adjustments and assembled a small side project. While I used my previously created configuration menu, the whole process of creating the app was really fast because I have already developed a lot of things like the menu and so on. And compared to the other apps, it was like very short time it took for me to create this app. The latest project which I'm currently working on since half a year is a music visualizer. So as I became more and more interested in music over the last two years, I started to experiment with sound analysis in Unity and I took a lot of visually attractive assets I found, used my configuration menu, used also the fluids which I created in Unity and assembled an app called Withem and I'm currently doing a huge update for it and I'm really excited for releasing it because there are so many nice features in there. And finally, with that project, I think something new came up for me. With the latest project with Withem, I started to contact a lot of people and developers and also joined Discord channels for asking several things like, can I purchase a license? Do you have ideas and thoughts? on certain problems I currently struggling with and I have not done this before too often and rarely ask a question somewhere but even if not all the people answer I'm in contact with some of them and got a lot of great ideas and informations about certain things and also a lot of help through communities and that was a really great experience and it feels good to be somehow connected to people which are working on the same things like you and was also amazing to receive a lot of help through these communities. That was great. With all that said, I want to come to a short conclusion. For me, developing games and apps was and is a lot of fun. And it was hard for me to get some real users in the beginning. And I think the reason why that happened was that I had not the right feeling for what people might like to play or use. I thought hey my games are pretty cool all the people will really appreciate that but it was not the case because there are a lot of really great apps and games out there and i guess finally i created some apps which people appreciate and even if i can't make a living out of the the earnings i get i will try to continue doing this and update my current apps and i hope this was interesting for you and feel free to just ask me anything here on youtube or just write me an email to get into contact with me and all the best for all of you.